everyone, I'm just going to make a quick video here that goes over the critiquing process for you to use as a reference. There is a little tool I should be able to use to write with, but I can't make it come up, so I'm trying to play with this here. So if you remember, we have the four errors, which is the placement error, the horizontal angulation error, the beam centering error, and the vertical angulation error. And then each one of these boxes coordinates with a PA or a bite wing x-ray that you're going to take. So in a full mouth series, we have all these 18 films. In the four bite wing series, we have, this is the left, or the right, excuse me, this is the right bite wing, um, molar bite wing, this is the right premolar, this is the left, and this is the left molar. Now the way it works, we, we'll talk about this and review this, but just because I'm thinking about it, when you are looking at the template, it's like you're looking at somebody's face. It's like you're face to face with them. So your right is their left, if that makes sense. So when you, if you're the patient, then what you need to do is turn your body around so that you're facing out, so that you're actually rotating around so this is the right side and this is the left even though when you look at it on a computer or when you look at it on an on the um, x-ray screen when it has all the films up you're going to be uh, your the right side of the screen is going to be the left side of the patient's mouth because you're face to face with them this will make more sense when you are looking at a dexter but just remember, if you're looking at a template, you're looking at somebody's mouth kind of looking back at you. And if you actually want to try and figure out, is it the left or the right, turn yourself around to be the seated patient, and then you can realize, okay, now we're taking, this is the left, this is the right. Um, it's just opposite when you're looking straight at uh, a set of films. So this is the right molar bite wing. This is the right premolar bite wing film. Jump over here to the other side. This is the left premolar bite wing, and this is the left um, big old L, and this is the right side. Because you are looking at the face of the patient is basically how you're face to face. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to click over here to this image. Oops, I have to go back to my pointer. So we're going to look at this radiograph here and we're going to critique it. So let's start with the first one that was the placement. So we want to look at the placement. This, first you have to decide if you're looking at a bite wing or if you're looking at a PA or a periapical. And we are looking at a bite wing because we see the crowns of the maxillary teeth and we see the crowns of the mandibular teeth and the occlusal plane is pretty much centered. So we know that we're looking at a, a bite wing film. Now is it a molar or is it a premolar? Well, we know that the criteria for the molar shot is that your second molar should be centered in the film. These are the second molars. They should be centered in the film, and you should see the third molar space. The criteria for a premolar bite wing is that you should see the distal, or the back portion, of the canines. Well, this is the second premolar. This is the second premolar. This is the first premolar. This is the first premolar and you can't even see the canines. So I don't know if they were going for a molar shot. I'm going to assume that they were because you can hardly see even the premolars. And so I'm assuming that they were going for a molar shot. They did get the distal of the second molar, so if you took this image in a, in a dental office, they probably would say it's fine. But per our criteria, you need to see more of the third molar space. And the second molar needs to be in the center. I wonder if I can do some drawing here. The second molar needs to be in the center of the film. So we want the second molar to be here. 
So if the sec these are the second molars, this is the second molar, and this is the second molar. So we want these two teeth to be moved into this position. So if the teeth need to go more into the center of the film, then does the sensor need to move forward, or does the sensor need to move backwards? So this is a tricky thing that's going to take a while for your brain to sort of wrap around. If you move the sensor forward, what's going to happen, and I'll show you this in um, when we're together too, what's going to happen is you're going to cut off more of the second molar. So the sensor actually needs to be placed more posteriorly so that the whole sensor moves back this way, therefore moving the second molars into the center position over the sensor. So then how this would look on the critique form is you would take, so how this would look on the critique form is you would take this, um, I'm just trying to see if I'm going to be able to make the marks good enough. You would take your pen and you would make an X in the placement like that. I'm trying to do it carefully. You're going to make an X in the placement and then you're going to color in the box in the direction that you need to move your sensor. So like we said in the other film, in order to get that second molar into the center of the film, you need to take your sensor and move backwards. So then we're going to color in this triangle here showing that it's a placement error and we need to move the sensor posteriorly. So we're moving this the whole sensor back farther in the mouth, moving it more posteriorly. So I'm gonna take away all these right these see if I can er no nope, that didn't do it. See if I can erase oh goodness that didn't do it either. Let's see. Can I just undo there we go. I'll just undo. Okay, so that's that error. Now we'll look and say, do we have a vertical angulation error? Well, no, not really, because these cusps aren't really um, overlapped over each other. So there's no vertical angulation error. What about beam centering? Do you see any beam centering error? No, I don't see beam centering. What about horizontal angulation? Do we see horizontal angulation? Yes, we do. We can see that these two um, teeth are overlapped here. We can see that these teeth are overlapped here. We can see that these molars are overlapped here, and they are overlapped here. They're even ever so slightly overlapped here, so we could even count that even though it's just barely. Now, a couple things that we'll talk about too is that how overlapped is is okay. We always want to mark it. Always, always, always want to mark it. But what would we consider a retake or diagnostic? If the overlap is less than a third into the enamel, and you can see the enamel, this is the line for the enamel. Oops, sorry, that went out of bounds. That's the line for the enamel, and the overlap comes in here. Do you see that? If the overlap is less than a third, then it is okay. This certainly is less than a third. This certainly is less than a third. But this is more than a third. This is probably even okay as well. This one is more than a third. So you just have to do uh, critiquing overlap by overlap. And then you compare it to your whole series. But per film, you're always going to mark every overlap that you see. And then when you're deciding whether or not a film needs to be retaken, you're going to consider how overlapped they are. So there's multiple levels in your critiquing when you're deciding whether or not to, uh, to retake a film. So then we go back to this one. This it erased my last one, but we had our X here and we filled that in there. That was for our placement error, error. And then we're gonna put an X in horizontal. Now you don't have to do anything else with that 
you just put the X. That's just saying somewhere in my film there was horizontal angulation. And then you leave the B and the V unmarked because those were fine. So that is how you would critique that film.